Hello everybody and welcome to our new video training package of Abacus. Advanced UMAT subroutine, VUMAT subroutine, a comprehensive and example-oriented package for advanced Abacus and finite element users. Let's look at its content in this 15 minutes demo. If you want to start analyzing your projects in Abacus, it is better to save your time by watching this demo and making your decision easier. This package contains six workshops in more than 140 minutes and here I will present you the syllabus of some workshops and we can see some selected parts of them. In these workshops, six main below topics are discussed. Writing advanced UMAT subroutine for non-isothermal elasticity. Writing advanced UMAT subroutine for damage initiation and progressive damage based on POC failure criterion of composite material. Gradual progressive damage for CZM or cohesive zone model. Writing Abacus VUMAT subroutine for kinematic hardening plasticity. Writing VUMAT Abacus subroutine for Johnson Cook plasticity and damage initiation. Writing VUMAT Abacus subroutine for Johnson Cook progressive damage and some more learning topics about advanced UMAT subroutine writing in Abacus. In this first workshop, we will implement temperature-dependent elastic behavior using UMAT subroutine writing. First, their equations are presented. As you can see, the stress equation contrary to what was stated in the elementary training packages is temperature-dependent despite the similarity only in mechanical properties such as lambda and mu that are temperature dependent. Note that this time the elastic strain for each component is equal to the total strain minus the strain due to temperature changes. We simulate our cube model with L side dimension. The required coefficients and values are presented here. Here we start writing subroutine. The beginning of the code is default terms of to use UMAT subroutine, which should be copied here. A bunch of variables used in subroutine are introduced here. For example, E alas is an elastic strain representation and others are visible. You see the results of job 1, which is the same as the subroutine model. Job 2 is actually our Abacus model. From the viewport section, we can view the results simultaneously. For example, for the Abacus model and the subroutine model, we can compare the mice's stress sim simultaneously and see similar results. Let's go for workshop number two. In this workshop, we will talk about UMAT subroutine for damage initiation and damage progression based on POC failure criterion in 3D continuum elements for composite materials. You can see elastic equations for composite materials here that is also can be found in Abacus documentation. In this equation, stiffness matrix is 6 by 6, and stress and strain vectors each has 6 matrix components. In POC equations, first I want to talk about how to identify the initiation of fracture in composite fiber. During fracture in fiber, because the stress in one direction is parallel to fiber direction, 
Damage initiation defined by this equation. Here we have some parameters and coefficients that will be needed in this workshop. And we have a plate with length of L, width of W, and thickness of T. In next chapter, I will talk about subroutine. Now, I want to talk about how to write the subroutine. In first part, we should define the parameters. Next, problem inputs should be entered according to graphic workspace that are called props. After all, if the damage initiation in matrix or fiber doesn't occur, the stiffness matrix and the stresses will be calculated again. And DDSDDE matrix or Jacobian will be filled and sent to software. A new strain will be calculated in this part in addition to previous increment strain and the strain changes. So, go to property module and consider the number of solution-dependent state variables in deep war. And here you can see the number of user materials. After that, you can create a section and assign it to the part. Also, you should create composite layup in solid type. The analysis was done for tension and compression and in normal and parallel direction of fiber. And compression will be done in standard, explicit and POC subroutine. For example, this is a standard model. Here the load is in compression type in X direction and you can see the amount of stress. And you can see the amount of T psi criterion that is equal to 0 0.55. In part criterion, according to UMAT subroutine, the stress is similar to previous and the damage initiation index is 0 0.55. Because the element type is shell here, we have local buckling caused by pressure due to compression stresses around hole. However, we can reduce scale factor here, but shell type elements affect the results on you anyway. Hello guys, in this workshop we are implementing progressive damage for CZM cohesive zone model by UMAT. Pay attention, here traction uh, equations in the cohesive element are in accordance with these equations. In this equation, TN, TS, TT are normal stress, shear stress in the first direction and shear stress in the second direction, respectively. As mentioned, the identification of this point will be done by this equation. The softening will be presented by these equations, traction will decrease based on the damage that will be happening. In this section, we will explain the necessary description for subroutine writing for the cohesive element in the case of progressive damage. Well, like any other subroutine, I will first outline the blocks in the subroutine. The first part is interface of subroutine, which is seen on the first part. Second part include comments that introduce the state V used in this subroutine. Delta M0 is then stored in state V8. In the next step, we'll not enter into this condition loop. T effective actually is equivalent stress of trial stresses. 
2 multiplied by GC divided on TEFF, actually GC is equivalent toughness, which we calculate above. So here delta MF is calculated. For damage property, we use mechanical, damage for traction separation laws, quads damage, because damage is started by quadratic equation stress. When the analysis was done, we can make a comparison, because for each model, we have the results. Well, these two analyses is here, and results can be seen. If we want to bring both analyses together, we'll use viewport and then tile vertically. Here we can see changes. Note that the solution pace is different for two analyses. In subroutine model, we see more progress. Hello guys! In this workshop, we simulate kinematic hardening plasticity by writing the UMAT subroutine. Pay attention in kinematic hardening behavior, yield surface will shift. In isotropic hardening, the yield surface will be larger. But for kinematic hardening, yield surface just will translate. You can see the displacement value here, which is X. That is subroutine flowchart. First, the inputs from the graphical interface as well as other items needed are defined in the subroutine. According to the flowchart, if the step time is zero, the elastic stress is calculated. The problem is over and we enter the next increment. If we are not in time zero, elastic predicted stress is calculated from back stress. Back stress is subtracted from stress. Equation 21 calculates a specific internal energy, which will be used in subroutine, and specific internal energy equals to a specific internal energy in previous increment plus difference of specific internal energy in current increment. This difference is presented in equation 20. In fact, this is area under the stress strain curve. The area is calculated according to equation 20. After that, the value of back stress, or which saved at st state V1 to 4, is deducted from the previously calculated stress, and after the average stress is subtracted from previous stress to calculate the deviatoric stress. In line 93, we have ds mag equation. If this value divided on radical 2 third, the result should be 1 minus stress. Same stress values can be seen in both models. On the other hand, their contours are similar too. For example, if we also consider the equivalent strain, the results will be as shown in the subroutine model in state V5. As you can see, the results are completely similar. We can make this comparison for each case. Therefore, the analysis is done correctly. It is possible to do this comparison for multi-element models, as you can see here. When we draw both curve, we see the results will match exactly. So our calculations for internal energy are done correctly. In order for this comparison to be fully visible, we use two different colors to draw the diagram.
In this session, we will talk about writing BU Matza routine for damage initiation and hardening based on Johnson Cook model. As you see, stress strain behavior has three parts elastic behavior, that is until sigma zero, plastic behavior, that is until the point where D is equal to zero, and damage behavior. In this example, we will talk about the first two parts. The elastic region is definite and in plastic region, yield stress and damage initiation are based on Johnson Cook criterion. This is reduced Johnson Cook equation that is used for calculating yield stress. It has a thermal coefficient and because the abacus considers a big value for transition angle, we will enter large value in subroutine to compare the results with abacus. I will talk about it more in the software. This slide shows the flowchart of writing subroutine. Here is input data. After that, if we were in first increment, the elastic stress would be returned to the software as final stress. If not, equivalent plastic strain would be updated. If we were in elastic area, it would be zero. After calling the UHAR subroutine, the stress will be calculated again. And after calculating mean stress, the viatoric stress will be calculated. According to the number of shear stress, von Mises' stress will be calculated using the equations in 94, 96 and 97 lines. If you need element deletion, you should also tick a status that here is active in default. OK, get back to Abacus model. In interaction module, create an interaction. And you can see Johnson Cook damage criterion that it is SDV2 for subroutine model. As you see, the results are the same. To compare it better, we can plot them in one viewport. For internal energy, the results are exactly the same. In this workshop, I teach you how to write VUMAT subroutine based on Johnson Cook plasticity, hardening, and damage initiation. It should be mentioned, this model includes damage evolution based on energy dissipated during the damage process. Stress strain equation in this material model is based on the shown figure. Variable definitions are shown in the following table. The flowchart of this subroutine is a little different in comparison to previous subroutine. The difference between this subroutine and previous one is only calculation damage parameter and updating stress based on that. The difference part is highlighted. As you can see, if the solution state variables or damage initiation variable is greater than 1, damage variable is calculated. As you can see, the stress magnitudes and contours are same for two models. Equivalent plastic strain for both models are same. In addition, contour and magnitude of damage parameter for both models are the same. It is the difference part between this workshop and previous one. Note that some parameters like solution state variables number 9 only available in subroutine model. I hope you have got enough information about this package. But don't worry at all. If you have any questions about this tutorial, ask us via support at caeassistant.com.